it's cold outside. And there's no kind of atmosphere. I'm all alone. More or less. I want to fly far away from here. But until then, I'm going to have fun, fun, fun with my guns, guns, guns. Yeehaw! Personal log, day, who knows at this point. I've lost count of how long I've been here, on my own, battling the hordes of the undead. I still can't find a light switch or a working lamp, so I'm just reliant on this torch. It's a bit annoying because I can't attach it to my gun, so I have to make a choice between seeing and shooting. I know a lot of people were peeved at that, but in my view it actually works well to increase the tension and fear factor of the game. There are very few games I have ever found scary, and Doom 3 is one of them. It's pretty much this, Aliens vs Predator on PC, and Silent Hill. The unnerving trilogy, if you will. And even now, after replaying it for this review, I still find it creepy. The monsters don't stick around anymore. When you kill them, they just dissolve. I understand that is to conserve processor cycles and memory overheads, because the game doesn't have to keep track of where corpse objects are. And sure, I understand that it gives an extra level of demonic creepiness to the creatures, because they are literally burning up with hellfire or whatever, but there's still a big problem with all this. If you're a veteran of the older Doom games, then I guarantee that at some point, you've used the corpses of your enemies as a way of marking which parts of the zone you've already gone through. You notice, when you go around, you often get lost in these games, because like it or not, some of the level designs are a bit like mazes. So what happens is, you walk into a room and you see, oh, lots of dead bodies. And they're bodies of enemies, so I must have already been through here. I'll turn back and go the other way. You can't do that in Doom 3. You end up wandering around, looking at places and thinking, have I been here before, or does it just look a bit familiar because it's the same sort of set design? Several times in this game, I found myself wandering through areas that I had already cleared, unsure of whether I'd already been through here, or whether it was just a similar looking area that I needed to pass through in order to get to my objective. It didn't help that near the start of the game, there is literal backtracking as I made my way back, looking for a scientist to meet up with the other marines. So I was backtracking through an area I'd already backtracked through, searching for an objective that required me to backtrack. But now there were no enemies, and I couldn't work out whether there were just no enemies because I already shot them, or whether I hadn't spawned them yet. It gets quite annoying. Triggering monsters is a staple of the Doom series. The games are littered with monster closets and have been since the very first game, where picking up a health pack was almost guaranteed to cause a war to work and the monsters to bite your backside. Doom 3 continues that tradition, which means you end up being ambushed by monsters without any chance of outwitting them. Personally, I got quite sick of all the jump scare horror tactics rather quickly. But thankfully, the game is still an enjoyable experience and it's very tense despite all the jump scare tactics. It's really tense, it's enjoyable, and I really had a good time playing it. The Martian base that we're exploring looks better than they ever did in the original games. And even though Doom 3 is nowhere near as action intensive as its predecessors, it more than makes up for it in the intense horror scale. The story is also enjoyable, far more so than the Doom film was. It's hardly a cinematic masterpiece, but then again, it's Doom 3. It's not supposed to be a cinematic masterpiece. I won't spoil the story here, but suffice to say, it's a fun romp with some decent voice acting, and all the bad guys might as well be called Evil Von Bastard because you know them straight away. It's one of those games. It wears its cliches on its sleeve, and it's proud of it. So what more is there to say? It's Doom. It's a Doom game. If you've played a Doom game before, you pretty much know what to expect. Kill the monsters. Find some more monsters. Open some doors so that you can get to kill some more monsters, and then rinse and repeat until you get to the end of the level. Keep going like that until you finish the game. That's Doom for you. That's what you want from a Doom game. I mean, sure, the zones change, but the monsters generally don't. But then again, the monsters are classic archetypes. You've got your imps, your demons, your fallen soldiers, your undead hordes. Everything you want from a Doom game. It's great. And what else is it to say from this? It's a Doom game. So, I'm not going to say much more. Let's try and find a way out. I think it's a teleport around here somewhere. Let's go. Aha, here we are. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know which one to press. Oh, ah, I'm in hell. Oh, hang on, no, I'm in Croydon. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Oh, at least we're back in anyway. Taxi! 
Today's video is brought to you by my graphic novels, The Collected Life of Naughty Mouse, Volume 1, All Over the House, Volume 1, and All Over the House, Volume 2. Thank you.